Good morning, River Church. How are you guys doing today? Uh, my name is Pastor Billy, and I'm going to be leading you all uh, this morning. Um, I'm so excited that you guys are here. I was, on Friday, I was calling my students from Pace, I'm a teacher at Pace High School, I was calling my students, because uh, we're opening up at BISD again here uh, on Monday, and I was calling my students, they wanted us to call them to see who was going to be in, and some some people were in, excited to come back to school. Other students were not excited, going to stay home. And uh, I realize that we are in the same situation here at church. And I just want to say that whether you are coming in to join us or whether you're choosing to stay at home for now, I just want you to know that you are loved and you're missed and we care about you, we care for you. And we are excited for the day, which we believe is soon, soon, soon approaching, where we will get together and be able to worship together again. <clears throat> um, a couple of announcements before we get going. Um, we are doing our gospel communities. If you guys are interested in joining, uh, I believe Andre has an online uh, gospel community. Guys, get plugged in, especially in this time of isolation where we're alone, we're isolated, we're by ourselves. Uh, it's super important that we stay connected. And I was actually talking to um, some students today, and they said, well, we haven't been out since, you know, for a year already. And, and, and I understand why, but I also believe that community, that friendship, that connection is important. So get into a gospel community. You can go to our church website, uh, River Church RGV. Um, and join uh, a gospel community it's all it's all there so um, and then the other thing too if you know any high school students we started our high school ministry it's icon uh, we started it last sunday and we're going to continue on and i'm just excited to see those kiddos grow so uh, with that said um, let's pray jesus we thank you for this time lord we thank you that we are able to come together whether it's virtually or in person and just we are able to study your word together and hopefully just be encouraged and, and, and sharpened. And uh, I pray that you grow us through your word, Lord. Um, I pray that, that you grow us through your word and that you ease our hearts and that you just give us the strength and the, and, and the power and just to do what you have called us to do, Lord. Uh, you love us and, and you have... Uh, just been faithful to us, Lord, and I pray that as we move forward, Lord, that you, uh, yeah, that, that we that we sense your presence, that we that we rely on your strength as we do so. I pray this in Christ's name, Amen. <clears throat> so we're going to be continuing in our Great Exchange sermon series, and uh, so we we've been talking about this for since January now and it's this idea of this great exchange right this exchange that has happened and the ultimate exchange that has happened is the 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 Jesus has turned death into life and and we have that in him and that's such a beautiful thing uh, today we're going to talk about one of these great exchange stories that we've seen uh, that we see in scripture and it's the story of this great exchange from going from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. So this, this heart of stone, we had this heart of stone. Uh, now we have this heart of flesh. <clears throat> so that's this great exchange uh, that we're going to be talking about. And so the, the question that I want us to answer as we go through this sermon is, why? Why did we go from a heart of stone and why do, do we now have a heart of flesh? So I hope to answer that question as we as we proceed today. Um, first story, though, before we get into that, I want to tell you guys a story uh, about about the movie Lion King. Now, Lion King is one of the one of the most popular movies ever. I love the Lion King. In fact, I think the Lion King was one of the first, if not the first movie that I ever saw in the theaters. And so it is such a good movie. It's so interesting. Um, you, know, you, you know the story. You know the story. But there's this really interesting part in the story 
right? Mufasa, uh, his father, I'm sorry, uh, Simba, his father had just passed away. He just died and it was a rather heartbreaking scene. And then his uncle Scar makes uh, Simba feel like it's his fault. And so what does Simba do? He, he leaves the area, he leaves um, uh, Pride Rock, he leaves his family and he goes off by himself, right? And he, he goes off as a young, uh, a young lion and over time, you know, he, he grows into an adult lion while he's away. <clears throat> but there comes a time in the movie though where, um, where Simba, he has this, it's almost like a, how did I get here, <laughs> right? I'm a, I'm a lion. I eat animals, I chase things. How did I end up eating bugs? How did I end up hanging out with a meerkat and a pig or a hog, right, Mr. Hog? Um, how did I end up here? <clears throat> and it's a rather real, uh, um, it is a, uh, uh, a, a self-awareness, self-realization -real, uh, moment where he, he has some, he's looking at himself in his reflection and he's almost like what uh, what I am what I am now is not who I am supposed to be and we see this we see this in the movie we see that that Simba he ends up making his way you know back to uh, his family he uh, the, the 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 kingdom that he was a part of has been overthrown by hyenas and by his uncle scar and he goes back and you know he saves the day he he reclaims the kingdom and, and then it flourishes and whatnot but i think this story is very very relatable to the israelites especially in the passage that we're going to be talking about today. So today we're going to be looking at Ezekiel chapter 36, and uh, it's going to be uh, verses 16 through 27. Uh, we're going to do the first chunk at the beginning, and then we'll go through to the second chunk. Uh, but it's Ezekiel chapter 6, verses this, this section right here is verses 16 to 21. So let me go ahead and read that for us. <clears throat> verse 16 it says the word of the Lord came to me this is Ezekiel the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel son of man when the house of Israel lived in their own land they defiled it by their ways and their deeds their ways before me were like the uncleanness of a woman in her menstrual impurity so I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood of that they had shed in the land for the idols with which they had defiled it I scattered them among the nations and they were dispersed through the countries in accordance with their ways and their deeds I judged them but when they came to the nations wherever they came they profaned profaned my holy name in that the people said of them these are the people of the Lord and yet they had to go out of his land but I had concern for my holy name which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came <clears throat> so the big the, the, the big idea here the big thing here is the Lord is holy and he has concern for his holy name right we, we've talked about this uh, in Leviticus right all of the Old Testament law is pointing to this idea of how holy the Lord is right and, and as we follow these laws these rules as we've been giving these rules we've been giving these rules and then we are set apart Right? And the Lord tells the Israelites, be holy because I am holy. And he's concerned. The Lord is concerned here because the Israelites have profaned his name. Right? The Lord is holy. The Israelites have not been holy. All right? and, and, and as a result of this, the Lord's name was not proclaimed among the nations, but it was profaned among the nations. 
So what were what were the Israelites supposed to be doing? All right, what were they supposed to be doing? Scripture says that the Israelites were a treasured possession, right? They were God's treasured possession. I read uh, uh, an author who talked about the Israelites as being, being described as a treasured possession, uh, and it's different than being like a treasured you know, house or building or monument, but it's this idea of them being a treasure. They're to be dispersed, right? They're to be spread out amongst the nations, right? That's been the plan <clears throat> from God since the beginning, right? He chose a people to express His goodness to the world through these people. It wasn't for these people, it was for the whole world through these people, right? <clears throat> so they're supposed to be spread out. I want to tell you a story. It's a silly story, but I like it. I, uh, I think it's a, it's a good one. And so me and my wife, we have three kids now, William, Matthew, and Joshua, and they are... Um, getting bigger and they're getting more time uh, demanding and it is becoming crazier and crazier at the Garza household. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's morning till nighttime. We're just nonstop with work, with whatever it is, with our kids. Like we just always have stuff to do. And so uh, on the rare nights, the rare evenings when we start to see the stars align, <laughs> um, and, and we see that the kids are going to go to bed at a reasonable time, and we see that we have a little bit of energy left, right? What we'll do is, as my wife's putting the kids down, she'll text me. She's like, hey, what do you want to do after this? Let's, let's watch a show. Let's get some snacks. And so I'm like, yes. As soon as she says snacks, I'm like, out the door. Let's go to HEB. I'm going to HEB. I'll bring back some snacks. And so what do I get? I get my favorite snack. I must admit that my favorite snack is the double stuffed Oreos. I think these are the best, the best snacks. And so I love the double stuffed Oreos. And I'll bring, and so because I love them, I'll get the biggest size package that they have. So I think they have like the regular size and they have like a family size. But I've recently discovered they have this party size, which is even bigger than the family size. That's what I want. So I buy that and bring it home. And what ends up happening with these Oreos is I end up eating a good portion of them. Uh, I even count. There's three rows. I'll usually have like a row and then my wife will have like a few. And then I'm like, okay, well, if she has a few, I know she's going to have a few. So then the next time I can have another. And so, I've, so I can have another roll. And so I've already calculated like how much of these Oreos I'll be able to consume. And I get so excited, right? I love the Oreos. But the Oreos, what ends up happening is it's, it's too many Oreos. It's too much. And so this, this, this package, this party size package that was to be shared with amongst friends, to be dispersed so many people can enjoy it, it's all hoarded with me. It's, it's, I don't want to share the Oreos. And it doesn't end well for me, just like it didn't end well for the Israelites. It doesn't end well for me either. But much like the Oreos, the Israelites, in a sense, are this treasured possession. And the blessings that they receive, it's not an individual, I mean, it is an individual blessing, but it's a party sized blessing. It's to be spread, it's to be shared, it's to be dispersed outward. They're, that's, so that's what they're supposed to be doing. But what are they actually doing? <clears throat> Not that. They are profaning God. They are hoarding all of these things. Right? They are taking advantage of the poor. They are taking advantage of the widow. When, uh, when they're going into the promised land, this is an example, when they're going into the promised land, they're supposed to drive out all of the nations. And they don't do this, right? They don't drive out the, in, the inhabitants. They, uh, they do in the first couple of cities that they go into, but as they get further along, you start to see some of the Israelites not completely drive out all of these nations. And so what ends up happening is there's this, there's this intermingling uh, of, of different uh, um, p 
people which which results in or, or, or what, which causes people the Israelites to then start to worship other gods and you see this throughout the Old Testament like all of the time this unfaithfulness to the Lord right this compromising of uh, the Lord being the the one true God that they're supposed to worship right they they continually fail at this so much so that in Ezekiel right now, uh, the, the nation of Israel has already split into two. So instead of being this one strong, powerful nation that's supposed to, to express God's love and God's goodness to the nations, right? This one, this one <clears throat> nation, the, the nation of Israel, instead of it being one, it had been divided into two because they couldn't do this. Right, and 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 by the time we get to Ezekiel, the north, the, so they, so the nation of Israel was, was was broken into a northern tribe and a southern tribe. By by the time we get to Ezekiel, the northern tribe of Israel had already uh, been dismantled, destroyed. They were no more. What we have left is this southern tribe, and it only consisted of two tribes. It was the it was the the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, and so these two tribes who made up the southern kingdom, right? they had been uh, uh, invaded and part of their, uh, the Israelites were then exiled or taken as captives towards, uh, to, to Babylon. So they were in Babylon and Ezekiel was one of the captives who is in captivity in Babylon as he's writing this letter. Right, and so he is. <clears throat> he is writing this letter. He is in captivity, and I would imagine he is much like the way Simba was. Like, how did we get here? What just happened? How how did how did I become a prisoner, a captive, and I'm not even in uh, in in the nation, the land that I used to be in? I'm I'm not even there. It's no surprise, though. Moses had predicted this, and if you read Deuteronomy, uh, Moses, it's actually kind of depressing. Moses is like, hey guys. Y'all are not going to be able to do what the Lord is calling you to do. And the Lord's going to drive you guys out and, and, and you're going to feel his wrath. And so Moses, about a thousand years before this, right, he had predicted that this would happen. Okay. So it's no surprise. But the big thing from this first section, the big thing is, is you see what the outsiders say. It says, but when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned the holy name. This is verse 20. They profaned the holy name in that people said of them, right? These nations, these outside people said of them, these are the people of the Lord. And yet they go, they had to go out of his land. So this, 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 this image, this, this, this goodness of God, this, this faith and, and, and favor and faithfulness to God. And it's interesting, if you look in verse 20, uh, the, the word LORD is in all capital letters. And what that signifies is it's talking about the LORD as being Yahweh. When it's translated from its original language into this English language, and you see all four capital letters for LORD, it means Yahweh. Now, in the Old Testament, there are, well, in the Bible, really, there are many different names for God. But Yahweh was the personal uh, the personal title for God. It was the close, the almost like the like the Father. I care for this person. This person cares for me. It, it says Yahweh. This 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 close, this intimate relationship. It just wasn't the God of 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 the the, the universe, the God of the heavens, the God of of of. Of, of an almighty and power. The, 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 the title Yahweh is the personal, close God. So it says, these people, these are the people of the Lord, this Lord of Yahweh. They're this, this close, intimate 
people with the Lord, and yet they don't even stay in the land that He had provided him. And so, the Lord has concern for His holy name, and it was being profaned among the nations. Which brings us to our second point. It's that we have a new heart. We have a new heart. The passage that we're going to read, <clears throat> it's the next section in Ezekiel. It's Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 22 to 27. It says, Therefore, uh, uh, verse 22 says, Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the, co the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. <clears throat> and from all your idols I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and I will cause you to look in my statutes and be careful, I'm sorry, and I will cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. So this is it. This is the great exchange. They could not honor the Lord. They could not follow the rules. They could not uh, keep the commandments that were written on stone. And I just wonder, I haven't read this, but I just wonder if, the, if it's a heart of stone, meaning this. we need to love through this heart of stone. If you look at the, the New Testament, uh, uh, Jesus sums up all of the um, <clears throat> All of the, the, the law, all of the Old Testament law into two things. Love the Lord and love your neighbors. And so it was designed to get them to love, but they could not love with their heart of stone. And God says, I am going to give you a new heart. I am going to put my spirit within you. Oh, man. We're going to talk about this here in a little bit, but... To the Israelites who were in captivity, who were, uh, you know, prisoners, this was great news. This was such a hopeful message. This God who has uh, sent them out of their land, who has, has allowed them to be captured by the Babylonians, right? This God says, I am still with you. I am still with you. Beautiful news for them. Maybe you're asking yourself, maybe you're asking yourself, how did I end up here? How did I end up where I'm at? Maybe your life is not going how you wanted it to. Maybe your walk with the Lord didn't hasn't panned out, hasn't been progressing like you've wanted to. Maybe, maybe your situation in life, whether it's uh, relationally uh, with your, your spouse or at work, is not going to, to plan. And you're asking yourself, how did I get here? How have I profaned the name of the Lord amongst the nations? I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged by this Ezekiel 36 passage, guys. The Lord has given us a new heart. The Lord has put His Spirit, He's given us a new Spirit, He's put His Spirit, His Spirit in us. Why? He says, I'll put my Spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. 
the Lord put His Spirit in us to give us the power, to give us the strength to walk in His ways. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't just say, yes, I'm just going to try harder today and I'm going to be a good person. No, when I face these difficult decisions... When I face these difficult situations that I know that the Lord has called me to. And I could say one of two things. I could say, you know what, I'm just going to try hard. I'm going to push through. And I might be able to get through. But what, what Scripture is saying right here is that the Lord will give us the power. He has put His Spirit in us to allow us to do what He has called us to do. And so I would encourage us, church, I would encourage you, trust Him. Trust Him in what He says. Trust Him that He will do what He says He's going to do. He says He has put a new heart inside of us and His Spirit has been poured into us to allow us to do what He has called us to do. Which brings us to our last point. It says, we can move forward. We can continue forward. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 6 says, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. This is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It says, And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that God had promised to the Israelites in the Old Testament, in Ezekiel, is happening right now. It says, And they and and I poured out my spirit, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. <clears throat> the Lord fulfills his promises. He fulfilled His promise here. And this is a beautiful picture, guys. It says, Now uh, now they were dwelling in Jerusalem. I'm sorry. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem. I'm sorry. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude, all of these people, came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them, the apostles, speak in his own language. And so you see this beautiful picture of Ezekiel, right? And and, and God uh, being profaned among the nations. You see in Acts chapter 2 that the the, the Spirit is poured out to the apostles, and what happens right after that? They are proclaiming to the nations. This is a beautiful picture, guys. It's a beautiful picture. The Lord fills us to do what He has called us to do. So where do we go from here? Where, what do we do? What's our application point? And I just want to, I know it's, it may seem vague, but I just want you to be encouraged. Whatever way that you are struggling, whatever way that you feel that you are falling short, whatever you feel like you don't have the courage to do, in the way to make much of the Lord. Maybe you're fearful about sharing the gospel. right? Maybe you're getting angry all the time and you feel like you can't control your anger. right? Uh, maybe you have a hard time uh, w- with the lustful eye. Maybe you uh, are, are struggling with pornography. You, you feel like you cannot stop. Maybe you're, maybe you're a, a, a liar. You lie all the time. Whatever it is, 
whatever it is, whatever your struggle is, listen to this. The Lord has poured out His Spirit in you. He has given you a new heart and He has poured out His Spirit in you. Why? So you can walk in His ways. Such a beautiful thing, guys. Trust it. Trust Him. Lord, I can't do this. But this is what you say in Scripture. You say you have given me a new heart for this very reason. I trust you. I'm going to try it. I trust you. I trust you. I'm going to try it. See what happens. The Lord says He has given us a spirit, a new heart, to be able to do these things. I love you guys. River Church, I love you guys. Um, I miss I miss you guys at home. I, I've seen a few faces who I know have been home who are now starting to trinkle back into church. And I, I, I miss you guys, and I can't wait for us all to be together again. Um, I love you guys. I'll see you all next week.